Hello, Billy the Artist here, back with another How to Draw lesson. Today we are doing Socks. We're going to draw Socks, the personal companion robot in the new Lightyear film, the new Buzz Lightyear film. Anyway, that's going to be today's lesson. This was the last one. Before we go any further, please do like and subscribe. Tick the box to be notified. Tick the box, tick the bell to be notified when... Uh, new <clears throat> lessons will be available and I am aiming to do a couple of lessons at least each month again a bit more information on that in a moment if you check out uh, you can jump to the lesson where the start is straight away it'll be in the chapters so you can just jump wherever that is but I am having a lot of fun uh, obviously it's been an interesting journey over the last couple of years but all of my lessons will become available first on patreon so again check out the link you can become a patron there are three tiers and you can you get access in all three tiers to everything you just pay what you can afford thank you very much it's an appreciation it supports this channel so that's a good opportunity you can directly through youtube and thank you to the people who've done that already and give me a super thanks and that's direct in youtube underneath the video there is a little button where the share and all that kind of stuff is that says super thanks and you can help support the channel by giving me a direct uh tip basically so thank you that that helps and it helps me to produce more videos so that's a real good bonus or you can go to buy me a coffee so if you go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash the art of billy you can support me there as well again i really appreciate the help really appreciate the support love to be able to do a lot more videos but that's what i'm aiming to do into the future we've got i've got a load going on and 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 it's immense the next three months is incredibly busy i am going to be doing some how to draw lessons again like i say i'll get two done uh per month which means two time lapses as well i've got two oil paintings that i need to do you'll see updates of those on all my social media you can check out the links and it's a very very busy time these last couple of years have been difficult for everybody for obvious reasons but i love doing this and i'm hoping to be in a position where i can do a lot more a lot more regularly but again the support is greatly appreciated and the more support i get and the more people that share the videos the more that i can do so that that's just a given and it's it's an absolute pleasure again the comments that i get back thank you you know i caught up with all the comments while i can i will answer all the comments and and i appreciate everything and helping you guys please do tag me on instagram and again the info turns up in the video you can use the hashtag drawing with billy but tag me directly on instagram uh, at billy underscore artist and you can also use the email through the about page on here to contact me and send me your drawings and i'll put them in a slideshow and i put the slideshows up there's six up now already seventh is in production i've got eight to do as well and i'm collecting images for number nine it's a joy to see and help you all with your art but back to the drawing lessons the last one i did was captain jack sparrow johnny depp and again people think oh these are really complex and i say oh you know these are for beginners they are because i teach you and i take you step by step from the very first pencil line right to the very end this video clocked in at just under five hours but the techniques that are in this video are exactly the same as drawing olaf and again in the description is the link to the olaf video it seems that there's no way you could jump from this to this but you can and again it takes years of practice to develop your skills over a long period of time but you can do it and i show you how you can do this drawing but again the cartoons we did queen barb from the trolls now i'm not using as tight a grid as this or even the olaf one this one is using a much simpler grid and you can see here this is the grid that's going to be used for it's not even really a grid. I, just, I used to just draw a simple cross in the center and then start building up the shapes. But this helps you to just plot and place the shapes down for the image. The actual paper is A4 paper. And the guidelines that are put on are across the top, 
are at 52.5105 and 157.5 millimeters. Down the side, 74.25148.5222.75 millimeters. It's an A4 piece of paper. That's 210 by 297 millimeters. In centimeters, that's 21 by 29.7 centimeters. The top lines are 5.25, 10.5. 15.75 centimeters and down the side 7.4 14.885 and 22.275 you know the long you, you it's all in the banner you can see where they are but it's basically center lines and then i divide each of those boxes into quarters as well and it helps to put everything in place on your page that's why I do what I do. Now, again, it helps you. There are over 130 videos on my how to draw playlist now, and, and obviously I'm adding to them. But there is the very first basics one, how to draw anything. And this is where I put shapes down. And I show you how using simple shapes, you can draw anything from a bird, a bee, a flea, a tree, a horse, a house, and literally anything else. So that's a good thing. But like I say, Johnny Depp, much more complex grid. Olaf, more complex than even Bob and what we're going to be doing today. But there is Harry Potter. Harry Potter is using the guidelines that we're doing today. And I've seen wonderful drawings by people, uh, which, which is a joy to see who've used that lesson. Now, again, there is, we have a number of Toy Story uh, there's Buzz Lightyear, there's Jesse, we've obviously got Woody, Ham the pig, and yeah, we've got Rex the dinosaur. So they are all available on the How to Draw playlist, and that's they are very simple videos. And then here are all lots of cartoons, lots of characters using these simple basic techniques. And, you know, we I do them, and show you in real time how to put all of your drawings together so again it's such a pleasure to do and we will crack on with the lesson and we'll just have a little bit of fun drawing socks so if i just move these out of the way excuse me olaf and just get harry out of the way we have so now here we go with the trusty 2b pencil It'll probably just be a 2B pencil today, uh, though sometimes I use a 4B and an 8B as well. My eraser is just a hard eraser and then a kneadable putty rubber. And I've got the blending stump and a piece of kitchen roll. You can use your finger to smudge, but these are all techniques. Now, again, this grid, there is the dimensions that you need to actually draw out this simple set of guidelines on this A4 paper. But we're going to start off and we're going to start from the center line <clears throat> and I'm just going to draw and you can kind of see a simple circle. So here we have a simple circle shape. Now I've drawn these lines on so that you can see them. I haven't drawn them very light, but you can draw them very lightly. So that way you don't have a major problem to rub out, to erase the lines when you've put all the, the construction in. So you can see this eye, it's like that, that shape is just a big kind of circle. So we're just going to be using these shapes. And even within that now, so you can see it's above the kind of, you know, that point that goes through that line, it's above the kind of halfway point on there and there's going to be you know he's got an eyebrow over the top but these these will all come in later now we've got an ellipse again in how to draw anything i show you just how i used to doodle ellipses so here we want that ellipse that's the outer part of his iris we've got a slightly curved rectangle that's going to be that highlight and then another ellipse inside. So we've just got a circle and a set of ellipses going down and through. Now we come over, we can, you can see there's a diagonal line up here. 
and we come to the top of the eye and again draw over and you can see how the top and bottom of his right eye has got to kind of match but again we've just got a simple ellipse and you can draw this ellipse shape and you can see how it goes through the left hand guideline and that's thinner because it's curved around the side of his head than this side and then again we want another ellipse and again same thing bottom of the eye is going to match so we've got the curve matching so imagine that that's that's the halfway point we need that ellipse a little bit thinner and then we've got the outer part of his iris the green and then that curved rectangle for the highlight matches this one and then we want a full ellipse and that's going to be the pupil inside Sox's very large eyes so again it's kind of cute cat now here his nose is just a triangle so I've done a triangle and then I've got a box coming down the side and then I've got another rectangle coming down here and then I'm drawing just a box there and that's the bottom part of his chin now I'm going to draw a big box and this is just showing you how so you got like the bottom of his chin underneath where it joins his neckline and that so his cheek is going to come out here so you can see within that space all the shape of Sox's head has got to fit in but it's 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 not quite a circle so I'm just you don't have to draw this I'm just showing you how mentally you can right within that box this is where the outer shape of Sox's head is going to be so I'm drawing a point there and this is where it becomes a kind of dot to dot and a point there now here you've got a center line this is like the the joint in the middle you know of his forehead going up over his head and you can see it's just to the right of the actual uh center line on the page and this is like the, the the fabric joint and then you get the same coming down from his chin but here so on this part we've got a nice triangle shape you know we've got this curve so if you look it's it's realistically so I'm, I'm looking now so you've got these two side points within that frame that you've drawn and again you don't have to draw it you can just imagine it if you put an egg so there's just an egg shape and then we do the same at the top and you can see where it comes through there and it's going to come through there and you can imagine the egg going through there that's the top of his head there you've got the shapes now his ears dead simple just a triangle so there you've got a triangle on the top with another triangle inside now again they're going to be curved they're going to have a more curved shape but I'm just drawing quick simple boxes and that there's another triangle there's the second triangle inside for the pink now again we've got an ellipse now down at this bottom part but first because it's his neck 
just going to draw a rectangle. So there's a rectangle and then we want this. Well, here we've got a very simple circle. And that's his socks cat tag. And then an ellipse for the ring that holds it onto his collar. And then there's an ellipse going around the back, down the side, bottom part. You can imagine it going around the back, that's it, that's his neck drawn out. So there I've just done another ellipse. And you can see very, very simple, quick, basic shapes. Now, fortunately, here we've got a nice rectangle shape with a little triangle. And then we've just got a Another nice, so imagine a rectangle there and you just put a curve at the top and that's its arm. And then we've got a diagonal line going over. Now here, it's a kind of, just a curve, so you draw a triangle there and a curve. And straight away, you can see how using those guidelines, we've now got a very quick and simple box set of shapes outlined down for Socks the cat. Well, the personal companion robot cat. Now we need to do an outline and crack on. So now we're going to do start the detail line. Now I am going to just get a piece of paper to rest my hand on so that I don't keep smudging stuff over. Again, that was just quickly using the simple shapes to get everything down. Now, we're going to start with Sox's nose. And you can see we've got the shapes in place. And we can just draw. I'm going to draw these lines quite dark. So we've got this triangle here with a curve. So you can see we need the curve at the top touching about there. And then it comes down. And you've just got this nice V. It's like a kind of, you know, a diamond. Imagine like a diamond graphic that you would see. So you come from the bottom, come up, and then it curves up. Curves over to the top, and then comes right down and touches there. And then we can bring that down to the point of his nose. Then you, the right side of the upper part of his, you know, like it, it'd be like his top lip. Again, we've got this curve that comes round and you can see how it touches through there. We've got this rectangle and we just need to build up the shapes And just use some softer lines. Now again, you don't have to draw, I mean you can use felt tip if you want, but you don't have to draw these lines as hard. I'm just doing them so that you can see them. And that curves round, up. Again, I'm doing this really quick. And now the side of his mouth, that comes down and that curves a little bit and then it comes through this corner point and you can see how it goes back up and joins that edge. But again, you just want this nice curve and joins the edge of his nose. Now, here you can see we've got that nice little triangle created and that's the dark of the entrance to Sox's mouth. And then we've just got this U shape here. So we come down, we've got the box we're just outside the box a little bit caving down that was my construction lines yours could be a little bit different and we're just caving round up and it touches and there straight away you can see the end of Sox's nose and his mouth already appeared which is absolutely fantastic now we're going to come down and we've got this first and it comes to this kind of halfway point here we've got the curve so you can imagine that's where the u, a u shape so you've just got that nice simple 
U. Then you've got another line just inside, and that's his kind of lower eyelid. In fact, that's wrong. I just noticed that. So anyway, let's just erase that quickly. There you go. You can see we all just make kind of simple little mistakes. Just going to bring that up a little bit. <laughs> so. Just made that a little bit larger and then bringing that U down a little bit. And that curves and then touches and you see because of the construction line that was there there's a much little much less space there so that's just nice and simply done quite easy and quite quick to correct something like that and that's how you do with your drawings when you're doing them very very quickly you can correct them the more detailed you be you need to take a lot more time so again now we know we've got the side of his head here and we've got his eyebrow it's an inverted U so it's just like a top curve so you can see you've got this egg shape anyway so you're doing the top part of an egg but the inside of his eye is going to curve over and join this inside part and then we curve down to join this side and then the eyebrow the top so we can just bring that curve in a little bit. The top of his eyebrow is about here. So we bring the curve up and it touches and it comes out through the guideline and then comes down and touches the side. And we can now bring that line to join as well. So that's his kind of eyelash, eyebrow, upper part. Now inside, we've got a white bit that curves down, created by the iris, and the iris touches up here. So I'm just gently drawing the line down, and it comes right the way down. And you can see it matches. So we kind of didn't bring that over. And this is how you correct as you go on the top of his nose, well, in the middle of his nose. So that's got to come to about there. That's the bottom. And we can bring the curve down. And that comes up and just touches where the nose is. And then goes up to the side of his nose that goes up his face. Now we've got that big highlight. That curved rectangle. So just imagine a banana with two squ <coughs> square edges. So you can draw the banana shape out. So that gives us the highlight that's going to be on. And then we need to draw the big eye. Again, looking and thinking we need nice space of the iris and all of that is going to be black. Now we come down and we do the same for this left eye. I'm spinning my pencil so I've got a slightly sharp point and the outer curve comes down, touches the center guideline out there and then starts its curve back up so you've got this first U shape. Now drawing up you can see this very top so imagine you've got like a cross that's the kind of form of the eye where the top of the eyelid is and socks his eyebrow so the top of the eyebrow is going to match there now, we're going to bring that line down and then come to the left. And 
curve where that touches no it's like a very thin crescent that's going to come to there and we get thinner to the point and that's going to be the dark eyebrow and that comes down touches the edge so again now if we draw a second cross this is where you've got the eye iris and the pupil and so we can well before we do that do another u down the bottom this is his lower eyelid and we can just follow that curve around and that comes up you can see i'm doing the curve from the inside of my hand and then the outer part of the iris again you can see how it matches you know I brought that line down a little bit on this side and it matches the lower part here so you've got the similar kind of gap and then we bring the curve out and we go up and the eye comes out from the upper eyelid and then here we've got the side of the pupil now if you see that that's like a d can you see like the edge of a d shape that's how simple it is just think about shapes all the time and then we curve around and on this side it's like a c shape i'm just coming up to the kind of highlight now again you can see there you've got this banana shape with a square edge and it just tapers down and that's the reflection of the window that's the highlight and there we've got the center part of Sox's face which is really really good and again you can see already how he's starting to take form so again we now can bring the stitch line the crease line in the center of his face and it comes down but again we've got this the outer part of his head now and it's not just one simple egg or anything like that but because we put these construction lines in it helps us to get the outline down correctly so i'm just going to sharpen my pencil i did all that work the construction lines and those first outlines without erasing anything now i'm going to start from the top point here and you can see how because we've got the construction lines we come down and his head it's like pretty much nearly by the center point and it comes off and you can see it like comes and then it just changes direction it's not a smooth curve it just curves out then a little bit and you can see there's that little bend there now here we've then got this nice curve shape that comes down to about the halfway point here now again as i did here think of a d you can see how you've got this d shape but you it's not a perfectly symmetrical shape you're altering the direction of the line as you go down so here you've got this triangle from the center guideline and it just follows down and you've got the shape at the bottom that needs to kind of, so you've got like a straight line there and then the cheek kicks back in a little bit and that's like the back of his jaw line so we can bring the line down there's that triangle and it kind of comes a bit straight and then kicks back around now here you can see we do have this lovely egg shape and it's to about there that it needs to kind of come and kick through so again i'm going to bring the curve round using the inside of my hand and then his jawline comes across underneath where the center line is of his stitching 
and you can see it then starts to kick back up and that's on the center part so we've got a kind of flatter line and then we need to come up and it's about there but the actual end of the curve is above the halfway point here this is where it pivots back and goes up so now and you can see I'm moving my arm to get the curve you know if you, the curve of your hand use your arm don't rest and try and just do it scratchy practice just moving from your shoulder not your wrist and you'll get much more fluid lines but again here now you can see we've got a C shape and it comes up to about halfway again I'm pivoting from my shoulder so there you've just got a nice C shape and then it just needs to just flick up a little bit and then we can see we've got this curve coming up but it's got a there's the side of Sox's forehead and then the very top is about there and we can just add the top of his line so using those construction lines and those boxes and shapes we've now got an absolutely fine shape all of that complexity of the different angles and trajectory of the line around the outside of Sox's head is done nice and simple so now if we can now come to the ear we can do the same thing we've got the triangle so you can see where the point is and you've got the curve of the ear and it's going to come from the bottom now again he's a kind of sewn toy robotic animal so the ear doesn't curve you can see there's a little bobbly bit that goes there now we need to come out the actual pink bit is on the halfway point so we need to come out a little bit further and the top but this is where your constructions help you and this is what you do when you're live drawing you make little marks and you build up you keep looking at your reference and you build your drawing in a fuller way so you can see how the ear curves out it's not flat there and curves back so think of that outer d shape and then it just curves down and you join the point down here but not a straight line slight curve and you can see that i'm using the pivot of the pencil from my hand my hand is resting you can if you want do from your shoulder but this is where you learn and develop the techniques top of the ear now again this one the top of the ear comes down and joins the top of his head and you can see where the points come through but it's got to join here underneath the guideline and it's the top and it's not a straight line so you're just going to slightly curve the outside now again we now have the pink you can see where the inner part of the ear that joins the the ear lobe where it goes from the brown to the pink the tan so you can see where these points are and it needs to be about the same but again we just follow the trajectory of the outer line just above that cross point and it comes down and joins and there's Sox's left ear nice and simple nice and quick now we do the same on this ear we've got the simple triangles they are just dead simple straight triangles the kind of points where it's going to join where it's going to come up so we want it about halfway a little bit above halfway that's the top of the outer ear you see how it's going to come down here past this guideline on the left hand side and then it joins his head here so again we've got this nice curve and same yeah about there so you've now got a dot to dot and now I'm using my arm moving you can see my hand moving smoothly and I've just done a nice smooth line and again practice just drawing lines like that pivoting from your shoulder again the curve now so this one now joining the top of his head in the center you've got a slight curve that comes down 
but then it kicks back where it goes to join the center of his head. And you can see the direction just slightly changes. Now, do the same thing. We can draw a line inside to match. Now I'm taking my time. This this is the laying the construction lines. I know some of my older videos were like half an hour and I did them really, really quick. And that's good fun. But I'm just taking this time to show you laying these foundations is the most important part. And you get this right. Shading in is just literally shading in. You do your drawings. I did see a drawing uh, recently where somebody had done a portrait of a singer. I can't remember which singer it was. And they were saying that they'd, they'd spent all the time doing all the shading and the drawing was wrong because the eyes were way off. This is where you get it done first. You get your construction lines in and then your outline and you, you put proportions are in place. This is what this does. And then you have a much more successful drawing. So anyway, we're now going to do Soxy's uh, name tag. So here we've got this little C shape. And this is the key ring. So you've got two lines. And that comes down and goes through the hole in the actual disc, his name tag disc. So on the name tag disc, we've got a circle and that's where the metal key ring goes through just under the top. So it's just slightly angled. So again, draw that cross in. It's not vertical with these lines. It's just slightly off. So you can see the very top is there. The bottom is there. And then we've got the sides. And so we can then do a D shape coming down and then we can bring a C shape on this side and that's the ellipse of his name tag all done. Now already we've got, you can see we've got his name socks and so there's a line that goes across there, these are just detail lines, there's a line there that's actually on the disc so this will help you actually place the letters and you do the same thing and this is a bit of the detail stuff and so <clears throat> that those diagonal lines go off and join at the bottom. Then you've got the barcode. So I'm just drawing a rectangle where the barcode's going to go. Then there's one, two, three, kind of three, four, one, two, three. Looks like three. Three layers of text. But then you've got the name socks. So straight away, I've just got a little box. And that's the O. And the letters are about the same size. And then you've got the S, the O a little bit narrower, and then you've got a box for the X. So those, I've drawn them quite dark. You would draw them quite light. So you can see I've just put in three simple little boxes. Now I'm going to erase those. Because you saw me draw the dark, I'm just going to sharpen my pencil as well. So there was my center line. So now I'm drawing these so you can barely see them. I've just gone back over the lines where, so you saw my pencil doing something. I've put three boxes in that represent the letters. So the center box is nice and easy. So now I'm drawing the outline. It's going to be a lot fatter. 
So there, nice and quickly, is a no for socks. From the box that's next to it, you go from corner to corner and the box has done the work for you. And there's the X. Now the S, S's can be a real pain, but you've got the box. So you draw a line in the center, line at the top, not right to the edge, line at the bottom. <sighs> and then you draw the little kick down on the top, a little C shape to join that side and the front of a D shape on that side and the kick up. Now again, I'll make that a bit more detailed when I do it later, but that's how simple you can actually get letters and names done again that's in how to draw anything part one i do a, an, an actual box with type on the side and that's the same thing now we need to get socks neck and the rest done so we're gonna bring you can actually bring that down a little bit we're just following the construction lines bringing up the top of the key ring and we're following the curves we've got these ellipse that goes round again you can kind of see there's a bit of an egg shape going right the way through just an ellipse there that creates the line of his neck created by his collar then we've got a straight line that's the edge of his collar on that side straight line that's the edge of the collar on this side and then we can follow that ellipse down and I'm using the curve that's a nice shape and then that goes up and joins the back of the neck and then the top of the collar because it's quite a thick chunky blue thing we can bring that edge all the way around to there that socks pretty much done now again we've got the, the basic lines in so simply so now we can draw the edge of his left front leg and then that curve goes up and goes underneath the collar and then his arm comes down arm shoulder and then you've got the white curve again we've got the construction lines in and you follow the shapes and that's the white patch on his chest now here the white patch curves comes down got the top part of his chest that goes up and joins and then you've got the right leg foreleg that comes down and goes right to the edge and that is how you get a very lovely detailed line of socks down on your page so now we're going to erase all the construction lines again I'm using this is a Stettler Mars plastic just my favorite just one I've en enjoyed using you you've, you find that you try different companies erasers products whatever and, and you just become comfortable with certain ones so again, this fits inside that space. I do use a putty eraser. I've got a I've got one of these, but in a pen as well. I've got an electric eraser and I've got a Tombow for very fine rubbing out requirements. So again, I've just, I'm holding the paper because the lines are so thick and dark. I've got to really <coughs> press on to remove them so here you can see I'm erasing all of the construction lines all of the guidelines down the side of his eye inside his ear and I mean like I say I've got this this one which is like a pen which would fit in there a bit better but because this has got such a big amount of space 
I could use the big Mars plastic for most of it. But again, like inside his nose, this is this is quite good, quite useful. His mouth. Whereas like these big spaces, you can just use. Now again, you can leave if you want to. You can you can leave all your construction lines on. A very quick loose drawing does look quite good with scribbly stuff on. But I'm just showing you these techniques to help you. Again, using the hashtag drawing with Billy or tag me on Instagram, Billy underscore artist. And you can email me through my about page on my site, uh, on my YouTube page. And jobs are good, you know, to show me your drawings when you've done a drawing of socks. And then I can put them in a future slideshow. And that would be absolutely lovely. So here you can see, and this is this is the interesting thing is, you know, I actually show the erasing. And that is pretty much it. I don't have much tape holding this on. Now Again, he says, there's the big brush. I used to just sweep this onto the floor, but I sweep it onto a big piece of card or another piece of paper. And then you can actually just put it straight in the bin. <laughs> Again, very silly, something very simple and I didn't, yeah, I just used to sweep it on the floor. It is nuts. But that's now gone straight in the bin, which is absolutely lovely. Jobs are good. And now again, you can now see, it's like, oh, I can, yeah, Mr. Bit, I can finish off removing some of these construction lines. Side of his cheek next to his ear but again I it's up to you you can you can do as much as you want I'm just brushing that on the floor so you can do as much as you want or as little and the erasing it's just up to you but there you've got a really nice outline and now we've got to start shading socks in Again, we're going to do this relatively quickly, he says. So just sharpening my 2B pencil. It does look like we are just using the trusty 2B pencil. Might use another grade, but... And that was uh, Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow. That was just a 2B pencil. So now I am very quickly... So you can see we've got a highlight down this edge, but I'm just filling in using the flat side of the 2B pencil. This is going to be quick. And then the pink. Now, again, it's got a brushed pile. It's some kind of material to replicate fur. And the, you could go nuts on this. Uh, there's a highlight down here. We're not in the pink yet. Let's do the a nice light tan colour. So there's a highlight running all the way along the top of his ear. The inside of his ear. Now again, I, I'm just filling this in. The directional light is coming from, you can see the highlights on his eyes, so it's coming from up above. So we're going to have, obviously we've got shadows down here, but we've got reflected highlights and all kinds of stuff. Now, again, the fabric is kind of going in that in that direction. So I'm just quickly using the tip of the pencil. And, and you can do that and you can do this as 
you can do it very detailed if you want but I'm just indicating like with hair the direction that that would actually go now using the flat of the pencil again at the tip you can see we've got this darker highlight it uh, highlight this darker shadow on the line of his ear where it joins the side of his head so the head is just casting a little bit of shadow there so that's a bit stronger but then right up the side we've got a darker line and then at the top again I'm using the flat of the pencil and as it gets flatter it allows you to do nicer wider softer lines so that's the underneath and then we've got a dark line kind of down the center and it can be a bit scribbly we can fill that in but then you've got the highlight now if, if you drew the dark in behind socks the black that highlight would really stand out now I'm not going to do that that would take a long time this is just a quick drawing well I don't think I'm going to do it now again here we've got this direction the shadow at the bottom so I've just done that and you can see now that that ear is a bit darker than the rest of socks now I've no idea how long this is going to take it might be half an hour might be 40 minutes could even be an hour I don't know we just I, I just make it up as we go along and we have fun so again this here I'm now just filling in quickly a bit darker I'm pivoting from my shoulder just filling that gap in now the pink I've just filled in with a flat tone but it's slightly darker on this side of the ear towards the outer edge now we've got a strong highlight right on the top of his head coming down so in between his nose you can see that gets a bit darker leaves a highlight on the top here following the curve round of his eye socket and the same going up there and it just gets lighter now coming down the side of his cheek I'm just going to fill because there's, there's no direct white highlights here so I'm just going to fill the whole lot in with tone and that comes down so we've got a nice mid-tone we're just filling the entire shape up now I'm pivoting not from my wrist I'm pivoting from my shoulder again coming up in here it's a lot brighter like at the top flat of the pencil is now doing a lovely job of filling in that tonal area now again much lighter coming down the cheek we've just filled a lot of area in very quickly now the nose again highlight on the top but There's the tone of the nose in. His mouth, his upper lip parts. Again, just filling the tone in. So you've got shadow at the bottom, going to lighter at the top. Now, there is, because it's so smooth, there's, I got a couple of construction lines there. So I've just erased them just to give it clear paper. Again, the same on this side, leaving the highlight on the outer edge. And then the lower part of his mouth 
like his bottom jaw part. Now again, we've got the tone all around the eyelid. So it's much darker on the upper part, but then you've got the eyeball. And you can see it's this, you've got this crescent shape here, but it's curved. So again, I'm bringing the tone nicely and gently and I'm getting lighter as we come around here and it's much lighter at the top. Now the green is lighter on the inside to the outside. So I'm just doing a mid tone for now, coming all the way around. And I need a solid line there that separates his eye rim from his eyeball. Now, I'm just doing a slightly darker ring around the outside of the eye. Now, it all looks a bit kind of vacant at the moment. Do the same thing on this side. Just bring a slight inside line there. Upper eyelid. Again, holding the flat of the pencil, the tan of the outer eyelid. Now, the curve of the white eye ball, and it goes bright there, just nice and white all the way up. That's the outer part of the iris. So again, I'm carefully just filling in with a mid-tone the iris as that comes down. And then we go up that side and then just make it a bit darker around the outside. Now we'll leave the good bit till the end we'll just fill in the rest so I'm now just filling in tone on the neck His collar this is just giving us a base tone it's a bit darker in the centre but we'll, we'll add those details after there's a highlight right on the edge so I'm now just filling in the top of the collar where it joins the neck then we've got a highlight on the back of socks and then the top of the shoulder so I'm just going to leave those available Again, I'm just using the flat of the pencil and quickly filling in a mid-tone. And you can see it's darker on the front as it comes down, but we've got the brown next to his arm and his chest. And then I'm just lightly indicating that slightly dark tone on the front of his arm caused by the light from that highlight. Now, the grey metal of Soxy's disc. And now we've got Soxy's chest, which is lighter than these outer parts. But there's a darker shadow here you can see there's a lighter part here on this right hand side and there's even a shadow cast by Soxy's name tag and then his collar and the shadow there again this is this is just the first kind of quick layer of tone 
again on the portraits they're like four or five hour lessons they take a, a bit longer now lighter tan on that shoulder darker where that comes down and joins there triangle of shade filling that light in now we've got a lot of tone has gone down very very quickly now this is just something that I do I quite like doing this and it it's just something I like keying in and I'll just smooth you don't have to do this all that tone in and I just smudge it around and it's, it's just a, a bit of a technique if I'm drawing live then I can't you can't do this and but I'm just using a piece of kitchen towel bit of tissue you can use your finger there's socks and it just softens all the tone I, I just kind of like it I like the effect you can just leave the pencil lines now this this is just the first stage and, and we'll add a bit more tonal detail in the next stage now that straight away by adding that dark triangle in Sox's mouth has just given you a really vivid focal point and if we do the same again I'm just using the 2B pencil if we just fill in Sox's eye not use the paper at all through this so I'm not too dirty uh, so if we fill in Sox's pupils now that will give us a lot more focus and you know blow it I think I am going to draw the background in now I've just gone over the line there so there we go just crisp that line up soften that again do we put the black background in I think we probably do that'll be a quick lot of sketching but I'll, I'll just do it round the edge and you'll see how that totally crisps up your drawing you don't have to do that you can just do the bog standard drawing like I'm doing now it just for a few minutes quick doodle using up a lot of pencil you'll see how it makes the highlights stand out it'll all make sense at the end <laughs> so there just by filling that in very quickly we have a more three-dimensional cat now we need more shadows but that's that gives you a lot to work with and again the background will help make everything stand out so just sharpening the trusty 2b pencil and we are going to crack on now we need to add some darker tone now I'm going to start with the eyes so we've got this crescent now again I'm doing this a lot quicker we're doing the crescent of his upper eyelid on his left eye now again that's kind of much darker that curves down again this just starts to really bring the focus and the detail in right eye 
got this curve that comes over. Now that's just like a nice kind of just simple dark tone. It's not as black as the pupil, but it is dark. Bringing that curve down. Again, I'm just following the curve lines. And it starts to really build up and develop the tonal qualities. Now again, there's a little tan line of the inner ring of his eye. So again, I'm now just using the slightly flattened tip of the side of the pencil. And you can see I'm just Building that tone all the way round underneath the eyelid. And then the same on his right eye. You can bring that down. Then it just gets a little bit lighter. But now we're just going, you can see here we've got a V. We're going to just add some tonal qualities so you've got this v coming down to the nose and this is where you've got a bit more shade and really it's kind of like a heart shape if you look at the the actual shape of that shade <clears throat> that comes down to his nose and then we've got the side of his mouth to his eye leaving this little bit of highlight on the top bridge of his nose just curve over a little bit more dark right on the inside now we come up over this eyebrow and I'm just filling that in quick again you've got this V shape again a second heart if you want there bit lighter at the top here now again we we filled in all this with some very light pencil and that's good then we come to the side of his face so here we've got this curve shape coming round to join the side here and then there's a reflected highlight down here so we don't want to go too far and there's a strong highlight right on the edge so we don't want to go too far with the tone again I'm just using the side of the pencil come up to near the top of the ear I'm gonna fill all this in with a second layer where we've just drawn that curve that comes around of his cheek Again, I'm doing this really quickly. We're coming all the way down with the second layer of tone going underneath the mouth. Here you can see we've got the same, just a slight curve coming out. But then you've got a highlight right on the edge. But already you can see we've got more three-dimensionality to Soxy's head then underneath his chin now here we've got a much darker tone even darker than up at the top in between his eyes so again I'm using the flat of the pencil building the tone up little by little remember it's easier to add tone than it is to take away and then we want to fill in that dark coming up to the side just feather it slightly again underneath the eye 
little bit coming out and then to the side of the eye again it's slightly lighter down that side it comes down joins the curve I'm just building the tone up quickly again up over the top of the eye and then fill in that tone very carefully just darken down by the side of the eye a little bit more and that's good then come down to the cheek and you can see I'll just fill that in you can see how that darker line is making his face three-dimensional now again right at the bottom following the curve around but leaving that reflected highlight underneath come right to the edge and again this is really quick I'm doing this as sketchily as possible just showing you what you can do relatively quickly again with the portraits I really do I do them as quickly as I can but I take my time so as you get a much softer transition now again dark out leaving that highlight on the edge as much as we can you can barely see it though because of the white background this is why I will fill in the background now again here coming from the side of the eye coming down we've just got this line of sh shade slightly under the eye and then this comes down to join the cheek and this is what gives you your three dimensionality now I'm just going to come in quickly with the kitchen roll and you can see just by pushing that tone around that really gives you a lot of nice shape and you can see that reflected highlight I'm just pushing the tone around a little bit more and that's really good now back in with the pencil we want to lightly again you, you've got this inverted V here tone in the white parts around his mouth kind of upper lip bit around the edge leaving the highlight on the top and then shadow caused by the upper lip down this side and you can see you've got this curve here of light and we just need to increase that darkness a little bit more side of the nose where it joins the creases is a bit darker again just leaving the highlight on the top just showing then you've got that crease line at the bridge of his nose a little bit more dark up the side again already socks is looking really good and this, these are just simple shading exercises again I'm just increasing that shadow going around the side of his chin cheek crease line down the center now I'm going to come back up and we're going to use the flat of the pencil and I'm just quickly indicating these darker shadows on the soft part of his ears 
again just building the tone up making it match here you can see the shadow cast by the side of his head we can just increase a bit in the pink area and then it curves up here same thing now the top of his ear oh, I'm having a blast I hope you're enjoying this this is fantastic soft bit of the pencil coming down darkening but you've got like two lines of dark and then like fuzzy furry bits again same on this side second line shadow now the shadow where it curves around here goes darker at the top and then just becomes slightly lighter as it comes down again just two lines of shade with a kind of reflected highlight in between lightening up as we come down towards where it joins the head darkening so again this side of the pink just darken that down a little bit and you're just learning shade and tone control that highlight's got to come all the way down again you can barely see the highlight this is just to make those highlights look really and it is a space cat so it does need to be dark around the back we will darken everything down and that will give us such clarity and quality so now we've got his neck you've got a shadow cast by where his head joins his neck <clears throat> nice dark shadow diagonal coming over and you've got that light bit there And you can see this diagonal you've got a reflected light here on this side so that fills the shape in there we can just increase that dark going up the lower part of his chin around his mouth that's much darker and then finish the fur off to the side again the same quality of dark underneath the collar over his left shoulder where his shoulder and arm touch the body nice and fuzzy I'm using the flat side of the pencil and then the light coming from this side means the inside part of his shoulder and arm next to the body are darker and you've got that shade going down the side leaving a highlight just fill in the tone again same thing quite dark underneath the collar on the white chest carry the shadow round and then even his little name tag casts a nice shadow onto his chest again it's quite mottled that fur is so you can scrubble about your pencil like this and it creates that kind of mottled light effect again I'm just using the flat side of the pencil leaving that light a bit and that works for you with your tone again we'll darken everything up I'm just getting these details nicely down again right arm next to the body comes up where the shoulder joins next to the body right at the top you've got that nice darker tone and then that highlight area there 
it's just kind of surrounded by that little bit of tone. Again, this is all really nice and soft. Just using the flat of the pencil. Again, you can use 4B if you want. It's a softer pencil. You can do nicer lines if you want using that nicer, softer gradation or even 8B. Uh, that would be ultra soft. Now again, we're on the collar now, following those curves. It's much darker in the centre. We've got dark shadow cast by the key ring. Where it goes through the hole in the disc. Again, we'll kind of add more detail on that as it goes. I'm resting my left hand on top of my right hand now, just so as I can pivot, bounce backwards and forwards, because I'm off the bottom of the page. Now, this is curved, but it's also got light. So because it's curved, plasticky kind of collar, you've got a darker tone here on this curve, then it kind of becomes a little bit lighter and then goes darker again when it comes into the centre right underneath his chin. And the same thing coming out here, we've got the dark right next to the key ring and the tag. But then you've got this triangle of dark caused by the light coming past his chin. So even though we've got the curve, and here you can see we've got this dark line on a curved object. And then it goes lighter. And then we've got the real dark right next to his neck. We're leaving the highlight showing. So you've got the curve of the collar coming round next to his neck that's got a nice dark point and then you've got the top leaving that thin line of highlight now it's not a clean highlight you're just leaving the tone of the pencil showing and you can see how drawing up to where the edge is, you're leaving that highlight nice and simple. Again, the socks disc needs to be a bit darker. So I'm just bringing that tone down. And then we add some more darks and some highlights that will really stand out. Again, I'm just smoothing everything round, pushing the pencil. And it gives us some real nice tonal shape. So you can see even now socks has become much more defined and much more three-dimensional just by adding those simple tones. Now again, we're just going to build it up. We're going to do a dark layer in the background and then do the details on the eyes and things like that and you'll see it all come together. Right, just sharpening the trusty 2B pencil up. Now we are going to detail up of the eyeballs so this is getting close to completion now this is going to crisp up the lines so i've sharpened my pencil and we've got this nice dark line around Soxy's iris on the outside. That comes and joins the side there. 
side of his eye. Now, we've got the dark line going right in the kind of corner socket. So that really crisps up the outer part of his iris as you can see. <clears throat> but now we've got that really nice dark green going to the lighter green around the pupil. And then we've got that highlight here. Now, it's very dark. So I'm crisping up the edge of the highlight of the window. And the same thing, so it's wider at the top and narrow down here. So, bringing the curve in, making it narrow. Now again, even that has a little bit of shade at the corners, but between the edge of the highlight and the edge of his eye socket, it's quite a nice dark colour. So we've got a gradation now from the edge of the iris right the way in. And it's a lighter ring all the way around the pupil in the center. So you just be careful and we can build the dark up. Again, I'm using this piece of paper so as I'm not resting my hand on Sox's face. And it stops my hand moving and then smudging. So you get a dirty hand and you smudge your drawing. Which is not a good thing. So now you can see that dark increasing towards the edge of Sox's iris. Again, I'm just using the pencil. This is all with the 2B pencil. And you can see how you've got that nice light band around the pupil. And you've got those big pool dark pupils in the centre. And it's those big cat eyes. It's like the cat played by Antonio Banderas and Shrek. Puss in boots. He pulled these big eyes kind of thing. Again, you can see I'm just, the, the tip of the pencil is now quite flat underneath. And it allows me to just build up the gradation of the tone going towards that lovely lighter section right next to the pupil. Again, now crisping up the edge of the pupil filling in any little bits where there was light showing her. So again, just increasing the dark on that edge. Now, increasing the dark on his eyebrow. Again, I'm just building tone. Yeah, I could have left that, but it's just nice just to build that up. Crisping the line. I've turned the pencil so I've got a sharp edge. I'm crisping the eye line on the edge of the eyeball and eye socket. And then the rim here has got a darker shadow line. Again, that just adds to that little three-dimensionality. And already that eye 
is now looking <clears throat> a lot better. So again, we now look to this side. We can crisp up the pupil. Now, I didn't do this earlier, but you can see I smudged the line over, and this is one of the first highlights. Again, I'm going to use my putty rubber, or you could use the crisp edge of a normal eraser. So I've just pulled that shade out. Now here, we've got a secondary highlight above the first one. So, I'm bringing the dark line of the iris down, but then it gets lighter about here. And then where it goes, that secondary highlight is, it then becomes dark again, so you get the full dark rim around the outer iris. That comes up past his nose, his button nose and and then his nose going up to the eye socket. Now we can increase the dark around the edge and remember it just goes lighter where it comes towards the center. Now there is a shadow right underneath so if you carry the ellipse on of the eye, and I've just noticed this on this one as well, you've actually got a little bit of tone darker in the corner and it goes lighter in the middle down to the edge. Again, that's just a nice little detail. Do the same thing on this side. Bring the iris right the way through. And you've then got the full form of the eyes. Now, bringing the tone down inside towards the socket. That darker tone around the edge. Again, I'm using the flattened tip that allows me to build up the dark quite nicely and softly. and leave that lighter part next to the iris. Again, I'm now crisping up towards the edge of the pupil so that there's no leaking highlights. Again, just Soften that gradation from the edge of the iris going in. Now you've got two eyes that look really good. Increase the dark on the nose. Then this eyelid, eyebrow kind of line. Increase that a little bit, but not as dark as the pupil. You see, that looks absolutely lovely. Now, come down to the neck and his collar. So, we now crisp up the edges go into the dark, a C shadow dark and then on the inside of the top of that line. Now I'm really increasing the dark on the letters, just going over what I did before, pressing on, turning the pencil so I've got a sharper tip. That's 
Really good. And that increases the darkness there. Now I need to sharpen my pencil again. These are just sharp details on the disc. So now following the curve, crisping up the edge. So you can see the lights coming from this direction. This is where the darker shadow side is. Now we've got a fine line this is why I sharpened the pencil. I'm just turning it so I've got the sharp point all the way. So I'm following, coming all the way around. The Soxy's identity disc. And that's the fine line all the way around. Then through the centre, we've got horizontal line that joins at the edge and then underneath Sox's name we have a horizontal line and then two diagonals that go out to the edge and then down at the bottom we've got this little rectangle that's underneath and that's this barcode so we've got a thick line and then a thick line and then we just got, we just put some slightly thicker one there. So inside that rectangle, you just do some vertical lines and that's your barcode. And then we've got three lines of text. So we kind of come back to halfway and just putting little dots in. Then line above goes all the way over. And then the one above that is kind of two thirds to three quarters. And now we've got some simple shadow. <clears throat> Build up the shadow on his chest underneath. And we'll put the highlight on, just pull out some highlights right at the end. Because that's where it all comes together with the final details. dark and underneath that neck collar now you can see his identity tag is now really standing out again crisp up where the collar connects to the neck around that shadow we can just crisp that line up quite nicely The same for the edge of the collar. We can crisp that up. Not a sharp, I'm using the flatter end, but just increasing the tone so that it delineates and makes it stand out better. Now we can build up the shadow in the centre. And that darker shadow around. where the collar joins his neck. So that just softens that edge off. Same over the key ring ringlet around the collar and the same on this side. Again, you're leaving this light line, which is the highlight on the edge of the collar. Again, same thing now, just using the flat, building up the darkness underneath his neck, where his head joins his neck. Building the shadow down in the centre, leaving this highlighted bit on the side.
and that's how you build and again you've got this kind of little mottled thing that's effect that's created by his fur so I'm just adding some extra tone and it just makes his neck just that nicer shape because you've got this curve created by the shadow and the highlights at the edges so now onto the shoulder got the shadow coming all the way around again I'm using you can see it's soft it's not creating a sharp line so I'm going over where the arm is joining to the body and you get that nice soft effect of the shadow on both sides of the join and then that part just up on the top of the shoulder and we can bring that down where it goes to the back again you won't see the full effect of the highlights until the very end but try and leave as much of that paper showing as possible just building up the shadow caused by his head and then the same thing using the soft of the pencil over that line you've got a soft edge not a crisp one like on the pendant on his name tag just darken it down in the middle of it this is going ever so well I hope you're having fun this is absolutely lovely because it shows you that everything that I do and even the, the full portraits it's exactly the same for a wonderful subject such as socks so now again I'm using the pencil flattened tip I'm just increasing the dark around his face around his mouth and it gives that extra three-dimensionality like I say it gets darker as it gets closer to his white parts around his nose and mouth and then we can bring that tone out and around light around this edge And you just let the pencil do a lot of the work and you can you, you'll get used to adding more shade just through touch and feel by putting more pressure on the harder you press the darker the line so you just build up slowly and you can just add a little bit more pressure at a time and that's how you can just build and add tone slowly just keep looking at your reference I'm going down under the chin and again you've got this reflected highlight just above the neck line and then all down the side of the face so now by the side of the eye there will be like one more section like I said I'm having so much fun doing this when we put the dark in so again coming up the side of the head darkening down the side of the nose that heart shape remember And going up eye socket and then finally like I say these tones on the ears these are actually quite good just building up a bit extra and this highlight on the edge you'll see will be illuminated when we put the background in because it will 
give us the crispness next to the ear and that's lighter going up and then that's a bit softer and darker now that even that on its own is looking really good and we've got the last bit of the background and then pull the highlights out and final details but this is such good fun right now I'm gonna come in with an 8b pencil just because it's bigger softer and it'll cover much quicker the area that I want to darken down now we need to be a bit careful but <clears throat> so you can protect your drawing with a piece of paper another piece of paper and that way you won't smudge it now I'm resting my arm but pivoting backwards and forwards on my my left hand over so the wrist is on my ha right hand and I'm pivoting from my shoulder so you can see I'm able to draw right next to the line of Sox's ear and straight away you can see the highlight has started to be shown now again I'm doing this really quickly you can actually get I quite like scratching into paper but <clears throat> you can actually get matte pencils now but I like the glossy sheen that a pencil a graphite pencil produces so I like scratching into the paper and making marks like that so there's down the side of his head down by his collar then we come down the arm and all the way to the bottom again I'm using the flatter side and I'm pressing on now to stop the page from going anywhere so now you can see I'm really quickly filling this background in and if you want it jet black you'll be using a lot of pencil which is fine but it will give you a much sharper image again it just takes time need to sharpen my pencil again I've got a stub one I use this pencil extender so you get more life out of your pencils and so again just quickly and carefully now I'm just totally pivoting from my shoulder just filling in a lot of this area really quickly I reckon that this filling bit is probably going to take me five to ten minutes so if you want to skip ahead you can but you can you can basically see and you'll see this develop and this is another reason why I put the time lapses up so you can actually see the entire lesson in overview very very quickly so that already gives us a really good background sharpening the pencil again now we're going to see again I'm, I'm going to crisp up 
next to socks is ears. Over the top of his head. Yeah, I'm glad I put the background in. This makes for a star cat a huge difference. Now up here there's a lighter bit. Now you can, that's called bokeh. When the background's blurred and out of focus, an effect caused by the focusing of a camera, it's called bokeh. Now again, you could take your time and you could allow that lighter patch to be shown you can smudge it with a kitchen roll and you know just blend it however you would like to again i'm just trying to get a really good lesson down as quickly as i can again the 8b pencil you could do this with a 2b you wouldn't get it as dark as quickly So this is a way of doing things really quick. It's like I say, I'm using this pencil and just trying to fill in as much as I can, as quickly as I can. And again, this is practice. You can fill in areas. You can see I'm not going over socks. That's just practice. So draw some shapes and shade up to them on a blank piece of paper. And it's just developing your freehand skills. So I have just gone over that line a little bit, but you wouldn't notice if I didn't say. Going up to his ear, bottom of his ear, next to his head. I'm just making this area as dark as possible and again with when I did how to draw Captain Jack Sparrow Johnny Depp that was all just a 2B pencil even the dark bits sharpen this again see that's looking really really good now If you had that snap, that was the tip of the pencil just exploding off. Coming down the outer part of his right ear, just carefully. But you can see now how the highlight stands out. And because of the whiteness of the paper, the brightness even, because it's this is car smooth cartridge paper, just normal drawing pad paper, and it's not bleached white. And I really like that kind of cream off-white tone. See, that's looking really good. Coming down the side of the collar, side of the shoulder. Right arm. So now we just need to fill all this area. So here and here, we've got this kind of lighter area. So I'm going to there's a little one down by this ear, but I'm not too fussed about that. Now again, you could do this taking your time in a much more detailed fashion. But those lights in the background that are blurred, it's called the bokeh effect. So when you see all the sparkly lights and car and street lights in night scenes in films and videos that's the bokeh effect created by the camera 
And the thing is, is in some ways it's recreating what your eye looks at, but you actually don't see everything in focus. You actually only have in focus on your eyes pretty much what you're looking at. It's a very, very short, small area and everything else is blurred until you then look at something else. So if you look at, say, a landscape or a city scene, a road scene, the only thing that will be in focus is what you're directly looking at. That's how your brain puts what your eyes see together. And when we see a camera that produces bokeh like these lighter bits, so here I'm now, so you've got the lighter bit there with the softer edge and the lighter bit here. Now again, you can do this as smooth as you want to. I'm just trying to fill this in and we're nearly there really quickly. This will look pretty good actually on the time lapse. This, this bit would be actually really groovy. So sharpen the pencil one last time I think. Again just pivoting from my shoulder just holding the paper with this piece of paper so as it doesn't fly off the masking tape just won't hold it I'm scratching so hard and that's pretty good Oh, I'm really, really pleased with that. So again, you can fill this up. You know, if you take a lot longer, you'll get the background much blacker, much better. <sighs> Going around the edge of his face again. But that looks really good. Again, the bokeh. So if you come in and just smudge that, you can see you've got that softer bokeh. But again, if I push this around, you see how much that's, but it's actually taking pencil off. But that's how you can get the bokeh effect. And I don't want to do that too much because I want to keep it as dark as possible. Socks is looking pretty good. But you can soften that loads. Right, just sharpen that one more time. Get a bit more. That's that's pretty much out now, that is. But I'm just increasing the dark. Let me just get that piece of paper so I can hold it around Soxy's curve that where I put the pencil next to his ears and head and body I'm just increasing now now we're down to final details now because I have used this 8b pencil I'm just going to go over Soxy's pupils. Again, that black looks so much better. Just making the black darker right next to his head. And that looks pretty groovy. Now, because this is the darkest, you can see straight away 8B is fantastic and that's just 
really made that much richer pool of darkness especially in comparison to his eyebrow so again just filling the main area in up to the highlight coming down crisping the edge and now filling in Sox's mouth. Now that's all pretty good. I'm just going to try and sharpen that one more time. Seeing as we're using, there's hardly anything left to actually sharpen now. But the 8B is much softer. So that will give us darker, softer shadows quicker. So again, that section under the neck we can get a nice soft dark crease line between his neck and his head joint and where all the dark is around his collar right in the center where it's much darker we get that nice softer shadow again even things like where his arms join the body underneath and then again I'd probably use a 4B pencil you get a kind of intermediary tone Again, these are final kind of details now. We're just faffing about nicely just to make it look good. I'm just increasing some of the shadows. And we can bring this. So we've got this highlight up against the edge of his jaw. And we're using the pencil and you can see you've just got that nice slight crisper line created by the shadow line just inside going up and he's kind of join line coming down <clears throat> underneath his chin and again same thing on this side right the way nearly to the edge you see we're going to pull out a highlight there but it just allows us to build the tone up with this softer pencil you could do all of this with a 2b pencil but The 8B, we used it, we used it for the background, so we may as well use it for this. And it's nice and soft, just increasing the shadow on the ears, on this top ear, and again, just increasing the shadow makes the highlight stand out that little bit more. Coming down all the way to the edge, crisping up the outside just that little bit. Now I come in with my putty rubber, and this is where. It should really now come to life. So, center of the window, just pulling out the highlights. The top of this eye, coming down, cleaning that up, down to that edge. 
top of that ear. Now, top of his left eye. can do the same thing. Now around the bottom of the iris, I'm just pulling off a little bit and it makes a difference. Now again here I'm just dabbing the top of his nose, the very corner of his actual nose, that's the bridge of his nose going up where you got that heart shape. Then all down the right hand side of his mouth there, centre line, the top, that edge, this lower edge, just dappling a bit in the centres. Now crisping up the highlights on the edge of his face. Now again the same on this right hand side. Just crisping that highlight up on the edge of his head. edge of that ear, the bottom and all the way down the top, top of both ears. Now again this is where you're using the putty rubber as a drawing tool. Top of that collar, the collar on the right hand side, right down the edge highlight just coming around the corner, side of his skin. Now this is an important one. And there you see the highlight on the top of the coin, the coin, the key ring binder. One underneath the hole, top edge and then a little one on this side edge. And you can just add a couple of other little highlight blobs. That makes the disc stand out and then you've got highlight right down this edge. Top of his chest. Again I'm just mottling now because that's the kind of fur. Top of his cheek left cheek and then you've got this really strong one down his back and his left arm and that really picks him out and that I think is pretty good so now it really is you can you can just fiddle this is so this is just your literal fiddling about time so you can just increase some tone like on the nose the mouth underneath you know, sharpen the edge you know, the, these are things that you can do to fiddle about a lot with your drawing and that's the thing it's your drawing you can spend as much time as you would like just go backwards rewind go over sections that's how you learn you just keep going over and over until you develop the skills that you need Again, I'm just crisping these edges up. Darkening little bits and pieces. 
just to make it all look good. So you can see you've got that curve of the collar going around. The same on that top part. Just building the curve and by crisping the lines up. There's the edge. Crisping the edge up next to his arm and his back. And that pretty much, again, I'm just shows the lines a bit straighter. Finishing those edges off. But that pretty much is socks. I hope you've had a good time. I've had an absolute blast. That's been real good fun. Oh, actually, that pushed him up. So, see, all that pencil work actually pushed my drawing board up, and that was just the scratching. And again, that socks looking pretty good. Anyway, I hope you've had fun. Please do like and subscribe. Please give me super thanks to support my channel. It's all appreciated. And if you want to, for advert free lessons, become a patron. But anyway, thanks very much. Use the hashtag. Uh, drawing with Billy and I'll see you in the next lesson. Take care, Ted off.